Welcome back to another Animal of the Week. In today's video, we will continue the trend of oddly named animals with the blanket octopus. The name clearly comes from the strange blanket-like membranes called webs. Blanket octopus actually refers to a genus of octopuses containing four different species, and really, the blanket part of the name only refers to the females, as the males of the species are a fraction of the size of the females and possess no webs. Though at least this time the animal is actually an octopus and not just called that. I'm looking at you, the mantis fly. Blanket octopus is known from the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. Different species prefer different habitats, with some living in open ocean, generally staying away from the shorelines and bottom of the sea, while others dwell on coral reefs and shallow shorelines, making dens amongst the rocks. These octopuses are well adapted to many different temperatures of water, allowing them to move around a lot, inhabiting completely different ocean habitats from month to month. It is also interesting to note that those who live in colder waters are generally smaller than their counterparts in warm shallow waters. Blanket octopuses are carnivorous, feeding upon other cephalopods, crustaceans, and small fish. Obviously, their diets are very dependent upon where they live, with those living in shallower seas around coral reefs and the sea floor eating many cephalopods and crustaceans, and those living in the deep open water eating small fish and most things that float their way. However, this can only be said about females, with the male blanket octopus being far too small to be able to eat any small fish or cephalopods, so they most likely rely on zoo and phytoplankton, or very, very small crustaceans that can actually physically fit in their stomachs. A little side note, octopuses in general have very interesting digestive tracts, with food going through the esophagus and then going to the brain before moving on to the stomach. Now this is certainly the most interesting part of these octopuses' lives, due to the sheer size difference between male and female blanket octopuses. Females can weigh up to 40,000 times more than their male counterparts when the blankety web is included, with females also dwarfing the males in length, capping out at over 6 feet in length, while the males sit at around only an inch, and that's big for a male. This sheer level of sexual dimorphism obviously raises questions about the mating process, and so I will attempt to explain it. The males possess what is called a hectocotylus, which is essentially a spear that the male will stab into the female's mantle cavity and then let go of. The hectocotylus contains the male's sperm, which the female will then hold onto until she is ready to fertilize her over 100,000 eggs. Because the female carries around the male's hectocotylus, she can decide when and where to fertilize her eggs, which gives them a huge advantage as she will be able to choose favorable conditions for the eggs to survive in. Once the male has detached this appendage, his purpose in life is over and will die soon afterwards. A notable adaptation that hasn't been mentioned yet is the blanket octopus's immunity to the Portuguese man of war. The man of war, Sting, is one of the most venomous in the world with the ability to kill humans, and yet the blanket octopus is completely immune to it. Not only is it immune to it, but it goes one step further. Divers have observed these octopuses brandishing the tentacles of the Portuguese man of war and using them as a defensive weapon, fighting off any potential predators, which once again shows the amazing intelligence of octopuses. That isn't their only defense mechanism, though. The main purpose of the blanket is to make the octopus look far larger than it actually is to ward off predators. Remember, these things can get up to six feet long, and so not much will mess with them. However, if this fails to work, they can actually detach their webs, using them as a sort of net on any predators, allowing for the octopus to escape. But remember, only females actually have the blankets, and so males are pretty defenseless. Being octopuses means they also possess the other general octopus adaptations. Large brains, intelligence, the ability to change colour, the ability to absorb some oxygen through their skin, an extensive nervous system, and the ability to mimic other animals, along with a whole host of other octopus unique adaptations. The blanket octopus goes to huge lengths to defend itself, and therefore must have a lot of predators. Being so widespread in the open ocean and in coral reefs means really anything big enough will have a go at them, though they are in for quite a fight against these amazingly intelligent animals. From a human standpoint, they are not endangered. The IUCN says they are least concerned. However, they are still very rare due to many living in deep open ocean. Those individuals living in coral reefs and shallow coastal regions may be under threat though, with corals disappearing fast worldwide. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.